Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to another Jaguars in the Barn video. So this is going to be the second phase of doing the suspension work on my XK8. Um, those that saw it last time, we did the lower drop links, stabilizer link bars, anti-roll link bars, whatever you want to call them. Um, so we've done both of those. Um, so today we're going to be doing the, or trying to do, <laughs> the rear lower shock pushings. Um, and I've got to say once again, thank you so much to everybody who's taking the time to message into me with their thoughts and comments and advice for doing this job. Um, so what we're going to do is tackle one of them, because this is the one that's been most asked frequently, is about can we do it on the car? And the answer is, I have no idea. I've never done it on this particular type of car before. I've done it on plenty of old Volkswagens and other marks of cars that I've owned, but never on the Jag. So we're going to attempt that today. So it is an experiment. So I don't know if it's going to work or not. So we're going to give it a go. And then all I've lost at the end of the day, if it doesn't work, is a bit of my time, which is what I'm here to have a play with the car. So I'm enjoying it anyway. So we're going to give that a go. And then if it doesn't work, then we're going to have to see about taking the whole shock out with the advice and methods being given to me by you kind subscribers. And then we'll get it on the bench and see if we can do it from there. But just to show you what we're going to be doing today, let's have a look. Well, my apologies there. I lost you on the last bit of video. Uh, my big fingers must have touched something on the screen. Right, as I was saying, so we've got the camera down in position. Uh, I'm trying to find a decent angle where we can kind of see what we're doing. Um, this is probably the best I'm going to be able to get. So we're going to get our tools out and see how we go. So the nuts on this side is 22 millimeters. As I said just now, I've already sprayed up with some penetrant. So I've let that soak in for a little bit. And we're going to try and crack that nut. So let's get my gloves on. hands dirty but just give me a bit of a better grip so i've got the 22 mil on a breaker bar to give me a good chance of getting it off so let's see how we go right oh look at that like butter genuinely <laughs> I've not tried to break that before. That's my first attempt. Oh, that shocked me. Right. So I've got the breaker bar on there. The opposite side is also 22 mil. So I'm going to get that on with a ratchet. I can rest the breaker bar on the floor. There we go. And that is undoing lovely. And obviously this is all going to be under a lot of tension because the spring is obviously under load. So what we don't want to do is to it, to, you know, for the bolt to totally just fly out because that could be disastrous. So just for a minute, we're going to take the nut off and then we're going to uh, reevaluate and go from there. So I'm going to reuse this bolt. I'm just going to go tighten up a couple of turns, undo it a couple of turns just to um, clear the thread off. Now I have got my, um, a lot of people are saying about air tools. Now I have got my compressor here with my air tools, but I totally appreciate oh, a lot of you guys don't have a compressor. Only access to hand tools. So that's what I'm trying to do, is just to try and do it with the tools that most of you that are following this channel will have access to. Obviously power tools will speed the whole process up a bit. But I say we're doing it for the majority. Right. So what I'm gonna do is just swap these 
over. I'll get the ratchet on that side so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Da -da 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 -da. Just done doing tighten up a couple of turns and backing off again. There we go. That's come in quite freely. As you can see, look. So very surprised. There's the nut off. Right. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get my jack up, put my jack underneath here, just to take the sprung load, to stop the spring from forcing the energy downwards, and I take the bolt out. So hopefully that will steady that and enable me to do it. So I just put you on pause a minute while I get that set up. Okay. So, just so I can do a bit of better filming, I've moved the axle stand from where it was. I've put it underneath the actual jacking point on the sills, uh, on the actual jacking point there, um, just to give me a clear space. Otherwise, I'd have been fouling where I need to knock this through. So, I've got the jack um, underneath the bottom of the uh, suspension here, and I've just pushed it up just to take the weight off of the spring. So I'm doing it shooting down on me. So whilst in this position, I'm going to go ahead and try to knock out the uh, bolt from the bottom of the shock. So just grab me a hammer. We're going to see how we go. So I'm just going to see if I can, um, with my stock it, because it feels nice and loose in there as I'm turning the bolt of my socket. Just going to see if I can, there we go. So I'm turning it, if you can see that. I can gently push it through the bare inlet. Lovely. So I don't think we're under any particular stress. And then I've got a hammer and a punch. And there we go. That is the bolt out. Simple as that. Now what I don't know is whether the shock is going to drop down its housing. So we'll just pop the bolt in on this side and see how much, if anything, oh, yeah, can you see that? Uh, my bush, it's getting a bit closer. The state of it, if I actually hold the shock still, let's turn it. Okay, so we've got the current position. I just had to jack up uh, the bottom of the suspension a bit more just to expose some more of the shock. Apologies for the darkness. And I just extended my axle stand to go up higher to um, support the car. And we're still supportive of axle stands on the other side also. So basically the kit that I've got um, is what they call a push and pull bearing extractor and all it consists of is a threaded bar with some sockets so there's my new bushing to go in it's pretty straightforward so all you do on the threaded bar see if I can show you one-handed so the threaded bar goes in one end of the socket 
and it sort of where we go there we go come on Simon <laughs> it catches on the bottom of the uh, the nut essentially like so then you have to have another socket on the opposite side in this case there wasn't one small enough in the kit so um, I've got a 24 mil uh, half inch drive socket so that would basically slide on the other way and what it's looking to do so if you imagine my bush is still in place I put my bush on the threaded bar and there's my shock coming up from the bush so the idea is you'd put the socket on the opposite end that would then marry up to the bush then another threaded nut assembly goes on that end which you wind 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 down and eventually the socket pushes the bearing through the bottom of the shock and into that you then wind it back out again socket comes away and then the whole threaded bar assembly complete with bush can be extracted so it's a pretty simple thing. It's probably something you can knock up at your garage if you've got some threaded bar and a couple of sockets the right size. You've obviously just got to make sure that the socket that the bushing wants to go into sits neatly on the mating surface of the bottom of the shock. So around here, not on the rubber. It's got to sit on the metal. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to get set up and hopefully we're actually doing it will demonstrate it actually working. So bear with me again. I'll get the camera set up and we'll get this puppy on. Right, I hope you can see okay. So I've got my bar with the socket on with the threaded bar portion. And then if I put this on the, um, I'll put this on the front side. There's a little sleeve slot here which you should be able to see the old bearing slide into. So we're going to go ahead, get that in position. And then with my socket, goes on the back side of the bar now. So I'm just going to go behind the jack. Slide that up. Ideally, I could do with a slightly bigger socket. It's a bit small. So if it doesn't give me any joy, I'll have to whip up and get some uh, of the sockets out of my tool set. And there we go. I'm just going to wind this up. Let's take out the slack. Hopefully my head's not in the way. So, make sure it's seating nice and square. Otherwise, it's just going to be fighting against the shock and not the bush itself. And we're just going to rotate the little slot, the window, so we can see. So, I'm just doing it by hand at the moment. Like so. Let me get our socket. Hopefully my head wasn't in that whole shot. Sorry if it was. Um, onto there. What size is that going to be? a bit of preparation so that's a 24 mil socket there so i'll have to get a spanner to go on the back side 
and then we'll see about winding it up. Right, I'm back <coughs> with the right tools this time. So I've got my 24 mil spanner, 24 mil socket for on here, and I've swapped out the other socket on there for one that was slightly bigger and hopefully be a better fit. I think that's a 30 mil. So all we're gonna do now is tighten this up and hope we can get it out. So I'm hoping you'll be able to see what it is I'm doing. So let's give it a go. Apologies again if my uh, head makes an appearance. Make sure that's seating correctly. I think it is. I think that is. All right. I better stood up or sit up. Right. This may be a long part of the video. So I'll do is I'll pause it here, I'll do a bit more spanner in, see what progress we get, and I'll report back. Right, so we're back on it. I got called away for a few hours, so I'm back down, so it's probably a bit darker. And I got my socket set back up again. I've gone for a slightly smaller socket here. So I think it was touching the edge of the bottom of the shock mount. So we're going to just to start winding up with the socket and uh, see how we go. But it might try and fight me a little bit. So I'll just get this set up nice and square on here. We'll see. Oh. How we go with it? Just want that to be a little bit higher up. Get on. Oh, that's tight. That is tight. Well, the rubber's pretty knackered. Let's give it a squirt. WD-40. On that side. Help it along a little bit.
Well, it's starting to go, I think slowly but surely. I think I'm starting to see a little bit coming through. Hopefully you can see all that. Yeah, it's definitely coming. There we go. If I just move the camera so you can see it. that slot see my sock on this end is disappearing it's just starting to push it through look so we are getting there Move it back a bit. It's a difficult angle to um, film without my big hands getting in the way. As I said, if you've got a windy gun, either electric or air, we'll probably make a bit more lighter work of this. There we go. It's popped off. Right. I can now back it off. There it is. Put that down there for a minute. There it is, the bush out. Stuck to me socket. There you go, separate those. Yeah, you can see it's uh, a little bit corroded. But way past its um, bit of light on it. sell by date. I can just move 
the inner sleeve against the rubber. Yeah, definitely it was a due replacement. So that's that one out. So what we're going to do now is just clean up the actual uh, lower part of the shock. All I've got here again is just a bit of um, old scour or brand new scour. I'm just going to um, get in there to give it a clean. I'll just try and move my light out of the way. Let's take you in there, look. see a bit of dirt but not too bad so we're going to clean that up it's gone dark so we're going to clean that out and then we'll come back and we'll get the uh, new bush ready to go on Okay, so we've cleaned out the bottom of the uh, shock mount as best we can. We're just going to go for the assembly now, which is the reverse of what we've done. So what I've got is I've taken a 30 mil socket, which I know fits inside there. And I'm going to put it onto the uh, lower part of the threaded bar. Nip it up. And we've got the new bush. Make sure it's nice and clean. And I'm going to push that down on the threaded bar. And the rubber sits nicely inside the socket, like so. So I know when we're going to press it, we're not going to do any damage to the rubber. It's just going to seat nicely against the actual bushing. Then what we want just on the lead edge is a little bit of grease. So I've got some here. So we're just gonna apply a little bit of that around the lead in edge. And just a little bit around the actual body of the bushing. It doesn't have to be loads, because obviously it's a super tight fit. So it's just enough to get it on there. Wipe my finger off. And we're just going to go for the reverse. So we're going to slot that in. Like so. Let's try and um, rotate it around a little bit so we can see what, what we're doing. To get it started, that sits in there quite happy. We've got the larger socket now with the slot on, on this side. And put the nut on. It's got a quite long threaded bar in the set. Let's get that in. Okay, again, line that one up. This will be central. You want that nice and even all the way around to ensure a new bush is not going to hit the shoulders of it. So it's not going to go anywhere. Which looks to be something like that. Okay. 
Okay. Move the grease out of the way. And let's see. Let me apply some force on it and start it off. Get the right size socket on. And hopefully you can see that's starting to draw in nicely. Move it slightly because my socket's catching under there. <sighs> right, let's go to the uh, taller 24 mil. We've got about another centimeter or so to go. to tighten up a bit now. So we're going to switch to the breaker bar so I can get a bit more leverage. Almost there. Let's check inside my slot, make sure it's not coming through. Nearly about another five millimeters or so.
again. Yep, a couple more millimeters. So it's taking me time. So what I don't have to do is to back it back out again. So we just take our time, patience. Back in a couple more turns. Couple more, I reckon, just to make sure it's between the shoulders. Still. I'm going to stop there. Right. Need to back off the nut now on this side. Like so. Hopefully, take it apart. Okay, nothing off. Socket's off. Thread a bar. Bush pressed home. And looking at it, I reckon I can come through probably another three or four mil to get it central. So I'm actually going to stick it back on again, get it in the middle, and then we'll start filming about putting the shot back up. So there we go. So I've just pushed it through a little bit more to get it nice and even. So that's fitting in there quite nicely. So I think what I'm going to plan on doing now is lowering the jack. And see if we can get the uh, bolt hole line back up into the bottom of the shock tower. I'm just going to slowly take the tension off. until we can find the hole. What I'm also going to do is the bolt that goes in there. It's just a little bit dirty. I'm just gonna clean that up, put a little bit of grease just on the flat part here the bearing side if you like. So we're just going to uh, give that a rubbing over now. Again, just with my scourer. Oh, just 
get the worst of it off. So, again, we're going to put a bit of just a little bit of um, grease along the shaft. I don't want it on the um, threaded part necessarily, but certainly. On the shaft we do, like so. We're going to try and slot it back in from the side. I'll just bring you back a little bit so my head's not always in the shot. the bolt through. Let's go back to the original washer and the original nut. And memory serves me there are 22 mil. do it so you can see what we're doing. Okay. That's nice and tight. We'll just from this side now. And just give it a little tweak. Again, if you want to see the torque settings, have a look in the manual. You know, Google. Google is your friend. For me, that. And there we have it. So that is
lower shock bush replaced. On the car, it needed a bit of elbow grease. So I'm sounding a bit out of breath. <laughs> um, but yeah, very, very durable on the car. So if you've got some axle stands, you've got a decent jack. Just take your time, go steady. Um, like I say, a couple of sockets threaded bar if you don't have the um, bear and push pull set. And you should be good. So apart from all the filming, realistically, it might be, well, less than an hour, I would say, quite comfortably. And not too taxing. So that's it for this side. Obviously, I'll do the other side. If I find any complications, I will let you know. But hopefully it will go as straightforward as what this side is. Um, what I've ended up doing as well, I've got some uh, rear anti-roll bar bushes, new ones of those. Um, while I'm here, I may as well carry on with that. And I will share the top tip um, about how to go about fitting that. And also uh, another tip on fitting the anti-roll bar drop links. Um, so what I'll do is I'm going to take the drop links back undone and remove them, take the anti-roll bar off. I'm going to clean that up, paint it, uh, or certainly rust proof it, new bushings, put it back together. And then I'll show you the tip I was given for replacing the um, anti-roll bar drop links, which should ensure that the rubbers on the new bushings last longer and don't end up getting fitted up twisted. So please tune in for that. But that's it for this uh, second part of the suspension video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, once again, if you have and you're enjoying what you're seeing, please like, subscribe and hit the uh, notifications bell icon so you can see when I'm putting up new content. I'm going to try and power through this over the next couple of weeks. So we should get some more content on very soon. So thanks again, everybody, for watching. Take care and we'll see each other again soon. Cheers all. Bye bye.